grass withers and the flower fades, but your word is eternal. Controlling your territory. Can somebody say a real amen? amen? Acts 16. Are you ready? He says here in verse number 16, the Bible says, Now it happened as we went to prayer that a certain slave girl possessed with the spirit of divination met us who brought her masters much profit by fortune telling. Somebody say with me, say spirits, make money for people. Verse 17, this girl followed Paul and us and cried out saying, these men are the servants of the most high God. Say spirits, no men of God okay. who proclaim to us the way of salvation. And this she did for many days. But Paul, greatly annoyed, turned and said to the Spirit, I command you in the name of Jesus Christ to come out of her. And he came out. He came out of her. That very hour. Isn't it amazing that when uh, a spirit possesses a woman, the woman manifests as a man. And men can be possessed and they manifest as women. I just think it's a demonic joke. Anyway, lift up your right hand. Father, we thank you tonight. We know that the grass withers and the flower fades, but your word is eternal. Send your word tonight. Speak through me. Give me unction to function. Give me clarity of thought. Lord, give me the ability to speak clearly and succinctly. Let the words that I speak be the very oracles of God. Touch my lips of clay. Let my tongue be as a, red, as a pen of a ready writer. Inscribing the precepts of God upon the hearts of men. Let there be none of me and all of you. Hide my flesh behind the cross. Bring to my remembrance everything you taught me concerning this subject. I pray that you touch the ears of the hearers. Let them not hear a man, but let them hear the voice of God. I pray that this word would impact this whole nation and will begin to bring the spiritual changes that are required for the children of God to begin to excel and control their territories in the name of Jesus. Somebody who loves God, say amen. Praise God. You may be seated. I want you to turn to the book of Matthew chapter number 8. Matthew chapter number 8. We're going to look deep into the word today. Amen. When you get stuck, when you get stuck, you look for spiritual solutions. You didn't hear me. Negative or positive, I need a fan. You need spiritual solutions. Hallelujah. And I've begun to look deeper into the word because I've seen that the wealth, the wealth, somebody say the wealth, the wealth, the true wealth, the true wealth is not with the children of God. It's not with us at present. We need to 
study the word in such a way that we can release the long-awaited wealth transfer. Because the wealth is still in the hands of the wicked. I'm not say, speaking negative, I'm speaking truth. The wealth is still in the hands of the wicked. Say the wicked. Say the wicked. There are two ways of looking at that whole word wicked. Um, you can look at the wicked as the unjust or the unrighteous, and you are correct. But the original translation, when we talk about the wicked, uh, Ecclesiastes 2.26, just write it down. The wealth of the wicked will finally be turned to the just. Um, the original translation, that's good, I like this sound. This is good, thank you. The original translation of, the, of that word wicked comes from the root word wicca. Wicca, when you're talking about uh, a tree that is wicker. There's a tree that's, there's furniture that is made from a wicker tree, which is crooked. Has anybody ever seen that? very expensive furniture? But it's made from a tree that's very crooked. So when the Bible speaks about the wicked or wicker, he's talking about people whose minds concerning the kingdom of God is twisted. So you don't really buy into the kingdom way of doing things. You have your own crooked way of doing things. And the Bible says your wealth will be turned over to the just. But that's not really where I am. And you know, it's, it's amazing. We, we celebrate when we hear scriptures like the wealth of the wicked is laid up for the just. And we should celebrate. But celebrating alone will not bring the money. Why is it that despite all the jumping and clamoring, the wealth is not yet with us? Who has the wealth? The wealth is in the hands of unbelievers. It's true. And, you know, and I think it is what is called for this deafening silence that I hear. As if you are not there. Are you there, somebody? Look at your neighbor and say, somebody who smokes has got more money than you. Look at your other neighbor and say, somebody who drinks heavy has more money than you. Isn't it a painful truth that somebody who doesn't pray half as much as you or honor God as much as you? David complained to God. I think it was in Psalm 73, I think it was. You know, he was bitter and he went to God and he says, you know, it looks like the unjust are the ones who are excelling. What's, what's, what's this all about? And it's amazing that today we have that same cry. That the unjust are excelling. Why are they excelling beyond us who are just? And that tells me that holiness is not a key for supernatural prosperity. I wish I could say it was, but it isn't. I'm not advocating for unholiness, so please don't misquote me. But I'm just saying some of the holiest men I know are some of the poorest men I also know. It has a part it plays, yes, in maintaining the wealth. But it's, it's, it, if you think about it, it messes you up. It really messes you up. And if you're not careful, you can get bitter at God. David says, until I understood their end. It's not the beginning of a thing that matters, it's the end of a matter. Hello? Hello? And you find that evil men are controlling the wealth. Not just in Zimbabwe. But all over the world. The richest men are not intercessors. <laughs> the, 
Bill Gates is not a great intercessor. But he has a good chunk of the portion of the world of this world, of the wealth of this world. So, so what is it about these men that has them controlling the wealth? What can we learn from them? One of the most painful scriptures in the Bible, it says, the children of this world, that's Luke 16 verse 8, are wiser or more shrewd than the children of God. They are wiser in their dealings than the children of light. And the Holy Spirit said something this afternoon that broke my heart in a way. We are being led by the kingdom of darkness. So light is not shining. It is darkness that is excelling. And unless and until we find out why it is so and begin to take lessons from them and use them in the positive, we will not make it until Jesus comes. There are some scriptures that you wish you could pull them out of the scriptures and say, I don't want this one. <laughs> Hello? But they are there. And we need to study them. From the scripture that I read in uh, uh, Acts 16, 16, we do see there that a master used a servant and he put a spirit on that servant and it made profit for the master using divination. And we hear of all these things happening around us and sometimes we turn a deaf ear or a blind eye, you know, and we don't really want to talk about it, but these things are there and they are real and they are true. It's almost as though the wealth of the saints is being turned over to the unjust. The reverse of scripture is happening. And the Bible calls it an error. If you read Ecclesiastes chapter number 10 from verse 5 to 8 downwards, I'm surprised you're not writing down that scripture. You must go and study it. This is a, 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 a word-based church. Yeah? Huh? We study things. We are like the Berean church. We go and check what pastor is saying. Is it true? This and it is, so that is not my opinion that I'm sharing here. So it's so important to understand that there is a negative spiritual world that is controlling the wealth. The negative spiritual. It's true. And we have to find out how to conquer the negative spiritual. Oh. I said we have to conquer the negative spiritual. Is somebody here with me? Ephesians chapter 6, and I went through this in the morning, verse 10 says, Finally, my brethren, this is Paul's final thoughts. He says, Be strong in the Lord. Be strong in the Lord. And in the power of his might. He's saying tap into the power of God. Use the power instruments of God. The blood, the word, the spirit. All these are power instruments that I teach you. Be strong in them. Then he says in verse 12. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood. But against principalities. Powers. Rulers of darkness. Paul begins to, uh, by revelation, begins to show us the demonic hierarchy in the realm of the spirit. And he shows us that there is another kingdom apart from the kingdom of God. And it's called the kingdom of darkness. And these are controlling powers. Say controlling powers. Say controlling powers. So these are the powers that are, I, I, in the morning I call them compelling powers. These are powers that make you do things against your will. 
These are things that uh, powers that just make things hard and difficult. Business is hard and difficult for many people. And they can't understand why. It is because these powers and principalities are working against children of God. They are not working against the kingdom of darkness. No. Because they are they cannot work against people who are on their side. Okay. There is the occult. Huh? Chivan. That's the that's called the occult. Pachurugino is the occult. You call it Chivan. It's the occult. So Kanamunaidada Mari Pachuan, he joins the occult. Black magic, all right. And a lot of these men who use black magic, Vanoshansa Mashave, Kuitamari, Vanoshansa Zikwambo, Kuitamari. The truth is, they are making money. Don't deny it. They are making money. Because they go to the witch doctor, they go to uh, to consult the oracle and he, he gives them instructions. He says to them, do this, do that. And they don't argue with him. They don't play politics. They don't debate. They don't analyze. They don't scandalize. They just take the instruction as it is. Raw, obey it and they see results. Asekuru says, Kusatkwa, Doka, empty your danga, bring it here. They don't ask They don't argue about that. So, the Bible talks about there's a, a remnant of people that is coming that will take over the world. And next week, I'm going to share a message with you called World Changes. Part of this remnant of people, the Bible says they will not break rank. These are powerful people that are marching across the earth, taking over the economic sector of the world. They are called world changers. Are you hearing what I'm saying? So, anyway, back to my point. In the occult, they don't break rank. So, one of the problems we have as Christians is we find it easy to break rank. We find it easy to talk anyhow. We find it easy to criticize spiritual things. So that is called breaking rank in the realm of the spirit. In that Ecclesiastes chapter 10 verse 5 to 8, he says, he who breaks the hedge, the serpent will bite him. So when you break rank, it is, it is spiritual suicide. Ananias and Sapphira in the book of Acts, they broke rank. They lied to the men of God concerning an offering. And the Bible says that they died. They physically died because they were buried. He's not talking about spiritual death. They died. Breaking rank is very dangerous in the realm of the spirit. If we are going to challenge the occult, if we're going to challenge the Muslims, the Muslims, they, they, they control most of downtown. Downtown shops. Most of them are controlled by Muslims. We as the black church have been reduced to consumers. And workers, sweepers, and the owners of those businesses do not fear or respect or regard your God. They have their own God. Who they reverence, be it a false God, they reverence the God. They have results from a false God. Their own land, their own buildings. Be they downtown, they are still buildings. Then you move further uptown in the CBD. Then you have buildings like Miko's Hotel, which have been standing there for decades upon decades. And everyone with any money who comes to town wants to stay at the Mikos. 
And these are owned by an elite group of white people. And I'm oxen. Who have money beyond your dreams. Beyond your imagination. They have money that if you dream about the money, you will be annoyed to wake up. These are called the Freemasons. These are the big boys. These are the boys that control the whole economy of the world. We're not talking about, you know, No, that's small league. We're talking about big league players. People who talk in, in, in their sentences come out words like billion. And they're not talking about the number of cells in your body. <laughs> They'll be talking about money. They talk about the kind of money that you wonder, does this money exist? They belong to an elite group called Freemasons. They control the banking industry. They control the entertainment industry. They control, control timber industry. They control real estate. Most of these big buildings in town, they actually have the Freemasonry signs. From the three-point star, the compass that's upside down, five-point star, all those stars with animals in the middle. You think it's architecture. No, it's actually a sign. Just like you wear a cross. They have those symbols. And they are controlling your world. And we as the church were happy to say, the earth is the Lord's. And the fullness thereof. But they are controlling it. Smoking. Drinking. Doing evil things. But controlling it. If the supermarkets are looking for change, they talk to the church. There's a problem somewhere. Because this is not the picture that's in the Bible. The picture that's in the Bible, that's painted in the Bible, is we, the children of God, are supposed to be the head and not the tail. Above and not beneath. We're supposed to be lenders to many nations. But we're looking for capital. should see your faces from here. Am, am I speaking truth? Am I speaking truth? You, you can't even fill a leave application form and say I need leave to go for a church conference. When you have a white boss. I'm not interested in all that spiritual jargon. You'll be here tomorrow. Working. And when you talk about world leaders, I mean, America is the leader of the free world. And, you know, we're discussing in morning prayer, I think there's been about 42 presidents or whatever. 14 of those presidents, which is world leaders, Obama is the leader of the world. Listen, it doesn't matter your opinion. America is the world leader. So if he's the world leader, then the leader of America is the leader of the world. Hello? So the leader of the world is a Freemason. Barack Obama. Together with another 13 presidents that have gone before. So we are being led the children of God. We are being led 
by people who don't regard our God. And I understand that these are dangerous things to begin to <laughs> to talk about because they are untouched. They are untouchable. You don't talk about the Freemasons. It's a secret society. A story. Anyway. But I'm talking about it. And we're confronting it. Let me give you a Wait, tonight I'm not preaching. Don't watch our. We're just talking. Let me let me paint a picture for you. Let's take the financial sector of Zimbabwe. Huh? This is it. Okay. With all the diamonds in Zimbabwe, look at what happened to your Zim dollar. Until it was unusable. Until it was not worth the paper that was printed. I, I, I saw a note the other day. 500 million. <laughs> One note. Probably good enough to buy a loaf of bread. Huh? Huh? So that money was now replaced with money that is controlled by Freemasons. And you gladly accepted it. And you are using it today, quietly. Going about your business. Okay. If you are using their money, what else are they controlling? Okay. You can get ECA. Let's take the banking sector. Huh? Thank God for the president. I love the president. The president came up with powerful initiatives. Want to empower our nerve? Huh? Huh? Hello? Hello? Okay, before we even get to the bank, let's deal with Nyaev, Raju. What have we done with the farms we've been given? No, we, 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 we repossess them. Are they productive? Huh? Hello? Hey, this is my Christ. My Christ. Tikanzizo, no. Vana, we have one of an open banking sector. Want empowerment. Economic empowerment. And the president is so right. Because that's how it should be. But let me give you a lineup of some banks. Which is the one time bank. Which is that? I remember I had an account at time bank. It was yellow and blue, I think. I remember the checkbook. Does anybody remember time bank? Huh? What happened to Time Bank? Time Bank shut down. Okay. Kovakoya! Royal Bank! Part one. I need to talk to my royalty customers. Powerful ideas. They came with cutting edge ideas. Huh? They were different from any other bank. I don't know my accounts. I don't know my bank. No, we are supporting our brother. Huh? Raka far wa nengu wa isipi. Don't go away. Waka tsaka staraka naka. Because I want to my boy with the problems. You can say, trust bank. Don't go to trust her. Tika bata furachi. Accounts. Could trust bank. Genesis Bank. 
Chakanaka, tini yaso furane scripture. Genesis. Bang. I'm sure, I'm sure that somewhere along the company ethos there was a scripture somewhere there. As you are going to get to say, Kukoyana Babikin. Huh? What can I say? Bagavara. Kukoyana Intermarket. What can I say? Bagavara. It is Metropolitan Bank and Zen Shahavira say. At least Kasara Muedu one Asara Kamira Kingdom No Vita business, my Freemasons. I told Rasin Arambosara, five per cent, six per cent. Yes, yes, run a stanyo one. Afrasia. The Muslim world has taken over. A Christian, a bona fide Christian committed to God. TN was rescued by strife. But Nyaiza Uzins will be MBCA, Banker Warung. Barclays. With head office, I think it's in London, in the United Kingdom, Barclays Bank. Chiroka sign what has my sign rose, right? She's my Freemason. Barclays Bank. You've never heard what Barclays Bank is shaking. Standard chattered. Unshakable. Eh? I've seen it. I've seen it. Stanbik. Never go South Africa. Owned by Standard Bank of South Africa. I've never heard of Dukunewa no Namata, but it's a big way. I mean, you can educate me. Why? Edwisus Vanavev. And it's not only Daru Faraka, Truku Farirana Mabek. I've closed. And I'm closing more. Governor of Deutsche Tower. But Eva Rungaheta say, there's something wrong with that picture. No, something is very wrong with that picture. It is because if Stanbeck was to have a problem, Barclays, through their brotherhood and their secret society, would go and assist the white brother. But it comes out the kingdom in Gufara. Isus we intervene no sick. Tonakirwa to fara. So what can we learn from the kingdom of darkness? Number one, unity. I should have called these lessons from the kingdom of darkness. They are united. Vano Batsirana. Vano Tsigrana. When is the last time you saw a struggling Indian? I know you saw a struggling black African Christian today in church this evening. You don't have to look far. You'll be shocked. And we laugh, but we don't help one another. How do you know a witch? A witch is someone who celebrates at the calamity of someone else. That is a witch in training. And these guys are united. They call their society the brotherhood. They take a lot of their ethos from the Bible. Help a brother in need. I, I was doing a, 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 a serious study on this thing. They help each other. They, they don't want to see the other person suffering. Yes, they have many negative things that 
they are doing. And we'll talk about the many negative things. But there are positives that we are not doing, which is part of our downfall as the children of God. If a black person opened another bank, we will bank there. Now, unfortunately, this Freemasonry world has now infiltrated the church. Apinam Church, man. Because how they control the church is they just put a lot of resources in the hands of the men of God, the, the, the set men, the apostle. And they give him fame. Like they give Anna Beyonce fame. He becomes attractive. People start running there. It's not only in Zimbabwe. This is happening all over the world. But there are covenants that are done. The selling of souls that is done. You sell off your soul for immediate financial benefit. For immediate fame. Overnight success. You, you can sell off your soul. And you become an instant devil worshiper. Though you are holding a microphone and you are preaching to people. As you are preaching to the people, you are initiating the people you are preaching to. That is the covenant. So, as I'm preaching like I'm preaching to you, you are being initiated. That's why many people from such churches, you know, you can't tell them anything because the messages that are being preached, pre preached is like chanting over the lives of the people until they become so subdued. That's why they knew. So, so, the church is not aware of what I'm talking about. The true church of God. So, when you now want to bring the children of God to a realm where they begin to operate on a fire realm, on a high tension spiritual anointing realm, they begin to fight you, the one who's trying to bring them up. Because they want quick solutions. People who want quick solutions end up in the occult. People who want quick solutions end up using compromised money. People who want quick solutions end up selling their souls. People who want quick solutions end up using the devil's financial resources. I want to go to, go to, go to Matthew 4. I want to show you something. The, tell your neighbor the devil's got money. He's got money. Cash. So if it's only cash you want, the devil is your best option. No, if you're not interested in heaven, relationship with God, being at peace with people, fellowship with the Holy Spirit, if your goal is just money, the devil is your best option. No, I'm, I'm telling you the truth. It's fast. It's quick. It's easy. Yes, it has consequences, but it's fast. Because many people today want pastors to do things according to how the devil does them. They don't want foundation. They don't want teaching. They don't want principles. They just want miracle money. Fast. Jesus came to redeem us this way, huh? from the curse of the law, to redeem us from sin and death. This way, he also came to restore the dominion that was taken away from Adam by the devil in the Garden of Eden. That same dominion which brought in wealth. There was wealth in the Garden of Eden. There were rivers flowing past the Garden of Eden. Four of them, if you go and study it. And all of these rivers brought in minerals, precious stones. So all of that was taken away from Adam when he was deceived by the serpent. Do you understand that? 
So Jesus came to restore all of that as well back to the church. All right? Let me show you how the devil works. Are you there? Come get ready. Read for me from, from verse number one, quickly. Matthew chapter four, uh -huh. verse one. Uh -huh. Then Jesus led up by the spirit uh -huh. into the wilderness uh -huh. to be tempted by the devil. Say tempted. Read on. And when he had fasted 40 days and 40 nights, uh -huh. afterward, uh -huh. he was hungry. Uh -huh. And uh, now the tempter came to him uh -huh. and he said, mm -hmm. if you are the son of God, uh -huh. command that uh, command those stones to become bread. Jingrisa. Ten stones into bread. <laughs> okay. Okay, get lost there. Carry on. Verse 4. Uh -huh. But he answered and said, What did he say? It is written, uh -huh. Men shall not live by bread alone, uh -huh. but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. Read on. Then the devil took him up uh -huh. into the holy city. Uh -huh. Say the holy city. Read on. Set him on the pinnacle of the temple uh -huh. and said to him, uh -huh. If you are the son of God, what should you do? Throw yourself down, uh -huh. for it is written, mm -hmm. He shall give his angels charge over you, uh -huh. and in their hands they shall bear you up, lest you dash your foot against the stone. Okay, yeah. Verse 7. Uh -huh. And he said to him, uh -huh. It is written again, mm -hmm. You shall not tempt the Lord your God. Mm -hmm. Again, the devil took him up into uh, an exceedingly high mountain uh -huh. and showed him all the kingdoms of the world. Say all the kingdoms. Say all the kingdoms. Read on. And their glory. Uh -huh. And their glory. Glory talks of wealth. Hello. Uh -huh. The glory of the latter house shall be greater than the glory of the former house. It's talking about wealth and substance. This is it. Read on. Verse 9. Uh -huh. And he said to him, all these things. Say all of these things. Okay. All these things means Znobatika. Look at me. Look at me. All these things Znobatika. It's things of substance. All this wealth, all these buildings, all these houses, all this money, all these diamonds, all these things. Nobatika. Somebody says Nobatika. All right. What did what deal was the devil making? And all these things, what? All these things uh -huh. I will give you uh -huh. if you will fall down and worship me. If you fall down and worship. If you fall down and worship. So the devil gives money to devil worshippers. I'm not saying you are you're a devil worshipper because you have money. But I'm just showing you clearly there that the devil gives money to people who eventually compromise and bow down to him. Many of the people, look at me. Many of the people that are in satanic, uh, you know, it's all satanic from Freemasonry, occult, Muslims, whatever. It's all satanic. My post story, it's all satanic. Most of the people who are um, operate in that realm, one of the biggest sacrifices they have to make is sex. So you think they just like sleeping with all those women. No, it's a sacrifice. They pay through sex. Hello? Hello? And someone said, hmm, that's a nice way to pay. You can only have sex to a certain level. When you are not when you are satisfied, the demon is not satisfied. Can you imagine having to have sex with the demonic spirit every night, three times a night, as payment? There are men who are told, You want money, you want to get out of trouble? All right? Stay married, but you have to sleep. You have to allow this man to sleep with you. That is your payment. That is your initiation. After that, Mariesi Aurukuda, Jesus Aurukuda, let us say, it's not good. My connections Aurukuda Ense. You are looking for capital? Here's your capital. Rarwa. And it's all demonic. And it's, it's, it's part of the system. Are you understanding what I'm saying? That's why Hollywood sells sex and pushes sex. It's part of the Illuminati. All those stars that you see that are very popular, they make sacrifices of sex. How come they can't keep a marriage? So it's, that's why the Bible says the blessing of the Lord makes what? It makes rich, but adds no what? So there's something that makes rich, but adds sorrow. 
And that is that system that I'm talking about. Yes, there's money, but there's consequences to it. Are you getting what I'm saying? And those people, they are getting results, but many of them do not sleep. I was talking to someone who was saying to me, part of some of them, they sacrifice, you sacrifice your sleep. You are not allowed to sleep anymore. Some of you, you sleep so much, you sleep even in church. That's why the Bible says he gives his what? Beloved, what? Sweet sleep. Can you imagine? For the next three years, I was kurara. And these are the people who are controlling the world. And their degrees, their rankings. And you see, we're ignorant of these things. That's why we're just clapping our hands in church. We know that the grass Doing nothing. Is in the there are degrees. There are se- you get to the seventh degree in the Freemasonry world. Seventh degree. And the person who first degree does not mess with the person who seventh degree. Because they can speak and complicate your life. We know that the grass withers and the flower fades, but your word is eternal.